Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video I am trying something a little new. Last week I posted a video showing the scripting needed to create wind zones for rigid bodies in Unity 3D. In response to that video, one of our members in the Renaissance Coders community posted an updated script that moves the logic from our ball script to our wind zone script, which is really cool. The community member's name is Matthias Hermsen. Sorry if I'm butchering your, butchering your name, by the way. And in this video, I'm going to cover his script and process for adding in your own wind zones to Unity 3D. Now, Matthias was also kind enough to post a link to his script on Hastebin that I will add to the description of this video as well. I will also link to the previous video just in case you would like to check that video out as well. Now let's get down to business. We are going to need a new C sharp script for this video and let's just cl right click create C sharp script and we're going to actually call this Matthias wind zone. Now let's open up our script and get to work. Now his script actually handles the updating of the rigid bodies by using a list. So we're actually going to go ahead and create a list. Make sure we set the type to rigid body. And we're going to name that rigid bodies in wind zone list. And we're going to set that equal to a new list type rigid body. Okay, we are, we are going to need a vector 3, wind direction, and based on his script, we're setting that to vector 3 dot right. And we're also going to need a float wind strength. And we're going to set that equal to 5. Now, we can actually get rid of our start and update functions for this script. So let's go ahead and delete those. And the first script we're going, or the first method we're going to add is going to be a private void on trigger enter. And now what we need to do inside of our on trigger enter is say rigid body object rigid is equal to other well, actually, he's got it set to col, so we'll just copy his exact script. So change your collider to col here. So we're going to set it equal to col.gameObject.getComponent type of rigid body. And now we need to do an if check. So we're going to say if object rigid is not equal to null. Whoops. Well, that was kind of crazy. Not bull. Null. Then we're going to add to the list. So we're going to say rigid bodies There it is. Rigid bodies in wind zone list dot add object rigid. Okay, so let's just go through this really quickly. When an object with a rigid body enters into our trigger collider, then we are just adding it to our rigid bodies in wind zone list. So that's actually pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So we're also going to need a private void on trigger exit. And again, I'm just going to change other to coal. And on exit, we are actually going to say rigid body object rigid is equal to coal dot game object dot get component type of rigid body okay so the exact same thing as this above line and again we are actually just going to actually I'm just gonna copy this just for speed sake here and post it here and so we're gonna check to see if the object rigid body is not equal to null and if it is not equal to null then we are actually going to just remove object rigid from our rigid bodies in wind zone list now the final method we're going to need here is a private void fixed update and in our fixed update we're going to check 
the count of our rigid bodies list. So we're going to say rigid bodies in win zone list dot count is greater than zero. So if we actually have rigid bodies inside of our win zone, then for each of those rigid bodies rigid in our rigid bodies in win zone list, then we are going to do rigid dot add force wind direction, whoops, times wind strength. Now let's go ahead and save this script because that's all we need for this. Now that we have our script saved, I actually need to make a few updates to my ball script here. So if I go back to the ball script, I need to comment out these three methods here because those would interfere with the other script. So let's go ahead and save the ball script. And now we need to go back to our scene in Unity. Now in our Unity scene, the only thing that we should have to do is actually remove this wind zone or wind area script. So let's add our Matthias wind zone and let's remove this one. Okay, now let's test it out and make sure it works. It should, yep, there it goes. So it is actually pushing the objects off very easily. So it functions very much the same way that the other script functions. This is just moving the functionality from the ball script to the wind zone script or to the Matthias wind zone script. So basically this is a more contained way of doing that so that it's all in one script rather than splitting it across multiple scripts. The other thing that this actually does, if we go back out to our script here, is if you look at this line, rigidbody.addForce inside of our ball script. When I wrote this, I said in the other video that this was a messy way of doing it, and it is. You know, this is not a very clean line of code. We're, we're doing multiple Git components all within one line, which is kind of sloppy and it's not very quick. So Matthias's implementation actually takes care of that for us and cleans everything up really nicely. Now, I really like Matthias's script, and it is definitely working, which is awesome. A few updates that I would make would be to change the wind direction to be a public, and the wind strength to be a public. And this is gonna make it easier for designers or end users to update the variables in the script. But again, it's already a great script. If you're a developer you know, and you know this is the functionality you want, then that's okay to not set them to public. But with them set to public, if we go back out, it should take just a second. Now you can see that we've got wind direction and wind strength being populated in our inspector and we can play with this and you know get the right values and things like that. So those are the, those are the two changes that I would make. Um, well, one other change is I would probably make this uh, list name a little bit shorter. It's a little hard to type in, and the IntelliSense takes a little bit to catch up to it. So, But again, great script, and a huge thanks to Matthias for posting his solution. In my video at the beginning of this week, I stated that we are going to try several new things to increase our integration with our community of coders. And I think that this is a great step in the right direction. Matthias commented on one of our videos, said, hey, I tried to make your script a little better. What do you think? And I saw it and thought it was great. So I told him, hey, I'm going to make a video of this. I'm going to post it and, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. So hopefully you guys like it too. If you do like it, be sure to give Matthias a thanks in the comments. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching.